Hi everyone and welcome to Pro Tools Answers where three Pro Tools users of above average competency demonstrate and elaborate on your Pro Tools questions put to the community in Avid's official Facebook support forum. Uh, please welcome Anders Motz. Hello. And Andy Hagerman. How you doing? And myself, Dave, we take you deep into the workings of Pro Tools technique and ethos to help the user community understand and get the best out of their investment. In this week's show, we're looking at a question from Don, who is asking about uh, batch bouncing to the devil's codec. And his question goes like this. Hi, colleagues. I have 131 stereo audio tracks I need to bounce to disc as MP3s separately. Is there a smart way to do it? Maybe a batch function. Thank you in advance. All the best. Done. And I think Andy has a good solution for this one. Yeah, very si very simple can, solution, to be fair. But, for, but first, can we, can we address the, the devil in the detail? <laughs> Um, I, I didn't. I didn't hear the question until you just read it, um, or I didn't read it all. Um, if he's, if this person wants to bounce 130 individual tracks, it's it's a fair bet that he wants to import them into something else to do mixing. That's that's why you do that, or you're archiving. Well, I'd yeah. oh, well I'd hope not because he wants to bounce as MP3s. So that and that. But would this is what I'm saying. Mm, is, is that, that would be the devil, right? <laughs> that's the devil, because so so many people think that MP3s are suitable for post, for, for for professional production, and it's not. It, it it's not a. It may not be a perceptible difference to you as a listener on an individual track basis, but the timing is so off that when you put them together, you're going to have problems. You're going to have massive, massive, massive problems. Um, so I would highly recommend rethinking your position on MP3s, if, if that's what you want to do. If, you've got, if, if it's a different thing than that, if it's not you know, to send it to somewhere else to mix, then you know, MP3s are probably fine. Um, still not a fan, but if you're going to, to mix this somewhere else, if you're exporting tracks from mixing somewhere else, highly recommend you know, eat, eat the space, um, but keep the quality. I'm, I, yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm going and this is... Sorry. This is not even audio file snobbery. Uh, we've <laughs> properly discussed this in the previous episode. Mm -hmm. You might find the link down below if you don't. Uh, just uh, Google it or you or search on YouTube for our MP3 uh, uh, yeah. episode, which was great. And as you give me too much credit for remembering to put the links, whenever you say links <laughs> down below, <laughs> you have way too much faith in me. But I'm I'm going to ray I'm going to to see Andy's uh, highly insist. Um, and I'm going to raise it to. Oh, no, no, highly recommend you you put down. Did you? Highly, Andy? I think yeah. I did highly recommend. I, I'm going I'm to see Andy's highly recommend, and I'm going to raise it to absolutely insist. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the word the word mandate is often is, is, is pretty sensitive for Americans, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But but to get back to Don's question, by the way, sure. really polite question, Don. A really really uh, yes, beautifully um, put. Yeah. So uh, we've probably got the solution for you. Yeah, we sure do. Um, it's so. So this is a feature that's actually been in Pro Tools. It's in all the different versions of Pro Tools. It's been in there a while, um, but it's one of those things that it's just kind of snuck in, and and people who didn't know about it weren't apt to learn about it. Mm. Now, now you can export clips as files, and you probably know that. But it, when you export clips as files, you don't get any of the automation or the processing or anything that's on the tracks, which leads me to your question. Um, but what we can easily do is this. We can bounce individual tracks, and you can do them on a, on a, on a batch kind of, of, of setting. And here's how you do it. So we've got a session here. We've got uh, 12 different tracks. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is the same thing you would do when you bounce anything and that's to make a selection. So select the area that you want to bounce. Now, Anders is making that selection in a track, but that's not the selection that matters. I mean, what, he did it perfectly fine, but make sure that your link track and, and uh, link timeline and edit selection is linked because it's the selection and the timeline that, that matters, right? Which, which, yeah. which is completely fine. Anders did it you know, completely right. Then you select the tracks that you want to bounce. 
And um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to throw some some workflow stuff your way, Anders. So let's do all of the individual audio tracks. Yep. Plus the. Um, plus the MX sub. Yep. Plus the master. Yep. And what it's going to do, this is a post-production thing. What, what we're going to wind up with is we're going to wind up with um, a music mix. There's no effect, so it's, it's effectively it's what, our, what we would call an M&E, music and effects mix. Um, the master is going to be everything, you know, is, is all the stuff that's going out that because this is a, a, a traditional two-bus master file. Yep. Um, and, uh, and then each individual track is going to get bounced, okay? Super, super easy. So uh, mm -hmm. the next thing we're going to do, and you can do this two, two different ways. You can either do this from the tracks menu, the track menu. If you go up to the track menu, you can choose bounce. Um, or you can go to any of the selected uh, tracks and you can right click and choose bounce there. And it will apply to all the selected tracks. So go there, go to bounce. Great. Fantastic. Now, um, let's go ahead and, and name that. There you go. Fantastic. And, and uh, you know what? Let's leave it at wave. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> let's do this. Let's leave it at wave and add an MP3. Mm -hmm. Yep. Huh? 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 Uh, How's that? That's really um, nice. You've stolen my so, thunder. This is where I was going to oh, go after it. But it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so so, so here's, here's the other thing. And this is, this is one of the really cool things about track bounce that isn't in any of the other kind of bounces is do you want to render what you've done with volume automation or pan automation or not? So if you, if you choose to render those, then all the dips and all the panning that you're going to do is going to be preserved in those final files. That may be precisely what you want, but you may want those tracks to have all of the processing, all of the editing, all that stuff except for volume and pan because you want to mix them and position them somewhere else in that case yep. uncheck those boxes and it, it, there's no right or wrong answer it's just completely a matter of personal opinion so let's let's go ahead and leave those checked just because mm -hmm. that's the way they are right now um yep. and let's go ahead and we're gonna we're gonna do this as, as interleave great fantastic um 24 bit is, is the way you probably want to do this for, for anything that you're going to use in, in another DAW. Yep. Um, 48K sample rate is the sample rate that you've got right now. So mm -hmm. increasing the sample rate isn't going to buy you anything. Um, decreasing yep. the sample rate from 48 to 44.1 isn't going to do any 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 audible damage. Um, but, you know, there's so, so for the sake of, of convenience, we'll just leave it where it is right now. Um, Pad to frame boundary is a checkbox right there in the audio. And that's really, um, that's mostly if you're going to be using this in a, a post-production situation, because remember that frames are the smallest, you know, increment of position that, that a, a video nonlinear editor has. So if you're going to, if you're going to export this for something to be used in post-production, you may want to. Um, may want to pad it out, in, in which case it just extends the audio file for you know before the the file and to the end of the file to to go to the nearest frame based upon the settings in your session. In here, probably not a big deal. Doesn't let's just leave it alone. Um, if you want to import it after bounce, now okay. So now we get into different workflows. If you want to archive your work as audio files, you can click that it will import all the tracks back into the session, which is completely fine because you're not changing the sample rate. And now you've got all of the original tracks plus all of the rendered tracks and you're ready to archive. But that's probably not what he wants to do, so we don't have to check that box. And then the file destination. And you can choose where you want this to go. By default, it's going to be in your bounced files folder. But just for fun, um, go ahead and do a prompt for location. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the, li the likelihood gonna is he's going to want to send it to somebody, isn't it? So, sure, but you know, so, but sometimes it's convenient to have it in. in I mean, it's it, again, this is completely a matter of personal preference. But mm. Anders, I'm going to I'm going to ask you to create a folder yep. on your desktop. Yep, sure. Okay, so uh, offline. Yep. Now, um, there, you know, if you're using outboard gear, then the offline won't be an option. But that's not a case here. So now we go ahead and bounce it. The next thing that's going to come up is going to be the MP3. Oh, sorry. The next thing that comes up is going to be the directory because you have to choose the location. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we'll go here. Um, f 
Fab. Creating path. a new folder on yep. my desktop. And mm -hmm. hit open to select that location, right? Right. And then and the and the arm. There we go. Now we got the mm. the Fraunhofer window comes up. Um, you know, because these are 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 basically MP3 backups. Um, you 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 don't have to go crazy. But I'm telling you right now, even if you choose the highest bit rate, it's still not going to be as good as the original file in terms yeah. of the things that matter. For us, as 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 producers, timing and, and so on and mm. so forth. Um, but so let's do this just just for fun. Let's change this down to 128 because that tends to be that tends to keep a lot of the quality, but brings the file size down to something you can attach to mails and throw into chats. Yep. Um, and uh, let's a bit and we're good to go. Go ahead and click OK. Yeah, and that Bounce. will start the bouncing process, of course. Nice and then quick. after the bouncing process, it will need to calculate the MP3s as well, or compress the MP3 files, right? Yeah. Or is that part of the bouncing? It's, it's part of the bouncing. Yeah, that, okay, it, nice. It, you know, and it just kind of waited, that's what it was doing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. now go ahead and, and go to your desktop, and you're gonna see... Uh, the PTA uh, tracks, that's it. Pop it. And, and if you could just just so we can see the naming, uh, yeah, there we go. And what you're going to see is individual um, names for all of these things. Um, mm -hmm. You've got you you've got your master, so that's going to be everything. You've got your music mix, your MX, and you've got stereo, MP3s and waves. You got MP3s and waves for everything, all in one option. You've created two files for every one of your selected tracks. Done. Complaint. Just as a uh, just as a note, a fantastic uh, work there, Andy. Thank you so much for that. But uh, I mean, look at the file size differences here. Uh, if that's not telling you that you might have a problem with the audio going from sixty megabytes to yeah, three point right. three, uh, you're acti actively reducing this by a twentieth. That leaves you five percent of the information that was in the original file. And, I mean, and that and let's consider if somebody wants to import this into a door to mix mm. it and then convert it back into an mp3 again afterwards yeah <gasps> how much of that data is going to be gone this dude yeah. i you know this is something we might want to do maybe, maybe we should do it with exactly this if you were to take the the wave files put them in yeah. a session and throw a phase scope on the master fader and then take all the mp3 files and put them in a session and put a phase scope on that they are not going to be anywhere close mm, to each other mm. i i promise you. that's that's a great idea for a show let's do yeah, that and like also that let's do uh, uh do one step further the way that dave just uh, told us uh import mp3 files mix them down to mp3s again because yeah. in the process when you're importing mp3s of course they need to be converted to wave files mm -hmm. and then if you if you then compress them again, but uh, let's let's do that <laughs> another show. <laughs> that's that's exactly it. <laughs> it's a it's a simple solution. It's a simple workflow, isn't it? The bounce window is uh, the track bounce window exactly the same as the mix the, the the bounce bounce window, right? Except for the, except for the fact, and it's an important distinction: the fact that you don't have to bounce the automation. Oh, sorry, the volume automation and the pan automation. Beyond that, yeah. it's, it's exactly the same. Uh, just a, a quick little note here that the the file name that you gave in the track bounds window will be like the 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 thing that is in front of the each individual file uh, the PTA right. track bounds which was what I entered and then it will add the individual tracks names after that. Uh, so yeah, yeah it's and and the file format. So if you're yeah. if you're doing different track bounces for post, for example, if you've got some mono tracks, some stereo tracks, five point ones, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth, you'll see there's a dash, a hyphen, and then the yeah. the, the channels of it. I I just want to highlight a slight limitation to to this because we obviously don't know what uh, Don specifically wants to do. Um, I've sure. got in my mind that he also might have some some specific beats that he wants to bounce, maybe turn into um, specific files. Um, sure. What you've got in there, Anders, right now is you have to select a specific bounce range. So if, and, and that's what Pro Tools is going to be keying the bounce off of. So if you've got tracks of different lengths, um, then your f the resultant files are always going to be exactly the same length, aren't right. they? Yes. And you may not necessarily want that. You may 
uh, specifically want to uh, uh, have these different tracks at different lengths. Well, sure. If you want, I mean, this is this is a I want to bounce all of these tracks at the same time, mm. and if you want to do that, you want them to be. I mean, you're probably going to want them to be lined up. But if you want to, for example, you know, capture this beat from this track, this beat from this track, this mm. beat from another, then we're back to doing this workflow one time for each selected area. Or using uh, capture and then uh, exporting clips as files. Except for the fact that you don't keep the processing. Yeah, 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 sure, mm -hmm. sure, sure. Yeah, okay. Well, maybe it's something we can go into in another show. Mm. Um, but for now, I, that's a really nice solution. Thank you very much both of you guys fantastic stuff so uh if you enjoyed what we were doing today and you got a lot out of that uh give us a like on the video um can you hit subscribe please hit subscribe on our youtube channel we're trying really hard to collect subscribers um and we'd love to have you part of that um if you hit the bell icon you'll be notified every time we release new videos and if you head over to protoolsanswers.com you can subscribe over there and andy will write to you every week uh, to let us know what mm -hmm. we've been up to and what we've been releasing and and you can also join our inner circle over there as well if you fancy taking that next step and supporting Pro Tools Answers because we are indeed uh, ad and community supported. Um, and that would mean the world to us if you were able to do that. And you can read all about the benefits that you get as an inner circle member over there too. In fact, the, guys, Facebook group. the, the guys have been uh, jumping onto Discord recently and kind of taking over the Discord. Mm. I don't yeah, know it's whether, been you, whether you've been on there, they've created their own threads and they're making yeah, it their own. Fantastic. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I love it. And the master classes we've been doing with the uh, inner circle have, have I, I mean, it's been amazing. Yeah. I just love those light bulb moments. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's so great. They're, they're getting so much out of it. Um, so all these mean to say is thank you very much to Anders. Thank you. And thank you to Andy. You bet. Thank you to all of you guys. My name's Dave. This is Pro Tools Answers. Andy, go on. You can say it. And we're out. <laughs>